Can I clarify? It is Yoast to speak and not used or juiced. It's Yoast. It's yes. Yoast. Please after me. Awesome. Which... I have not been leading all my uh, clients and colleagues astray <laughs> for the last three years. Hello and welcome to another episode of the WP Elevation podcast. My name is Kath Hughes and I am a coach here at WP Elevation. Um, I also run a WordPress design and development agency here in Sydney, Australia. So I'm really excited to announce that our feature guest this week on the podcast is Joost de Vork, a man, the man behind the cartoon character, the heads up, one of one of, if not the best, free WordPress SEO plugin, otherwise known as Yoast SEO. And in this episode, Yoast is going to walk us through getting the most out of his plugin, what's changed, what's new in content and SEO components, and what we can be taking advantage of that you may not know about. Listen in and be sure to download the checklist checklist at the end to make sure that you apply what you learn in this episode. Stay with us. This is the WP Elevation Podcast, helping WordPress consultants elevate. Hey, this episode of the WP Elevation Podcast is brought to you by WP Elevation. Well, more specifically, it's brought to you by a bunch of our happy customers. See, frankly, I feel a little bit awkward telling you how great WP Elevation is because you're probably not going to believe me because WP Elevation is my baby. It's something that we started over three years ago. Of course, now we're a team of of, of coaches and mentors and we have hundreds and by the time you're listening to this probably thousands of members all over the world but it still really is something that I'm very passionate about and, and of course if you join WP Elevation we make revenue and we make profit so it's a little bit awkward if I tell you how great it is because you probably think I'm just trying to sell you on it and partially I am because I know how beneficial the program is. So what I'd love to do instead is just introduce you to some of our customers. So if you go to wpelevation.com slash the podcast, all one word, you'll be able to hear some of those stories from our customers and hear for yourself how WP Elevation has impacted their business and changed their lives. I hope you enjoy that and I hope you check it out at some point. Right now, let's get back to the podcast. Hello, I am Kath Hughes from WP Elevation and I am very pleased and extremely nerdily excited to have with me Yoast of All, aka the man behind the coveted Yoast SEO plugin. Yoast, welcome to the show. Thank you. Can Thank I, you for having me. Can I clarify? It is Yoast to speak and not used or juiced? It's Yoast. It's yes. Yoast. Please after me. Awesome. Which... I have not been leading all my uh, clients and colleagues astray <laughs> for the last three years. For those of you who don't know, um, tell us a little bit about who you are, what your background is, how you found yourself installed in four million plus WordPress uh, installations around the world. Um, so it's actually six and a half million now. Ah, uh, six and it, a half. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's weird. It's growing fast. Um, so I'm. Uh, I grew up as a nerd. Let's start there, and then I uh, went into uh, marketing at one point, and uh, at a certain point in my career, about now just over ten years ago, uh, I went into a trade called SEO. And uh, that was sort of the, the combination of the two where I could do marketing all day but still be developing and, uh, and playing with that. And I built a plugin, uh, or I actually I built several uh, SEO plugins for WordPress and at some point I decided to combine them all together. Um, we're talking about five years ago now. And I released them as one plugin called WordPress SEO. Um, that plugin got quite big. Um, yeah. As it, it, at some point, I had a million users, and my wife said to me, "Maybe you should start making some money off of this." And um, I'd say, "Well, you might be right." And um, we started hiring people, growing the company, etc. Now we're at six and a half million, and Yoast is a fifty-people company, and uh, yeah, it's it's insane. It's the power of press. That is incredible, isn't it? And um, I, I, I like to think, though, that most people wouldn't have to get to a million installs before they start thinking that you could probably make a little bit of money. That's like a high benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you, you can do that way earlier. The, the, the thing is, for me, it's a hobby. Uh, yeah. and, it, and I wanted to keep it a hobby. I was, uh, I was a consultant for some of the biggest brands in the world. So I, I was consulting for The Guardian, which you know in Australia too, and I was consulting for eBay and like... So I was working on the bigger sites and yeah. I had good fun doing that. 
and I wasn't making bad money, so it, it was just a hobby on the side. But when the hobby on the side is, uh, it becomes that big, it, yeah, at some point you just have to switch. You do, you do. So you haven't had a bad inning so far. Um, and no. I have to ask you, so have you spoken to Google lately? The reason for this, my son legitimately thinks that Google is a lady who knows everything and gone on her. Um, I, maybe you could these- give us the latest? <laughs> Yeah, well, we, so we regularly speak to Google, um, <laughs> to both ladies and men at Google. Uh, to clarify, I won't tell them that. Uh, I think my uh, my last call with Google was about two weeks ago, uh, but we have, uh, I, I think, at least weekly interactions with yeah. uh, some of the people on the search console team and uh, uh, search quality teams and to see, not- like, okay, how can we help people better? Yeah, and you're not making this stuff up then. This is like qualified Google. Excellent. This qualified Google. It's like real people. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so, Yoast, given what we said about Google, um, <laughs> being that it is a real thing and that you actually have contact with them, I wanted to ask some yeah. specific questions about your plugin and some SEO scenarios that we could probably help our audience um, and perhaps educate a little bit further down those lines, demystify if like. Um, firstly, video SEO, it's become big. We've noticed it. Um, and it, personally, we just in, uh, plugged the WP Elevation um, website into the Google, um, your video SEO plugin Um, and just switching it on and suddenly we've got, you know, our video is turning up in search results with nice little video uh, previews, which is awesome. Um, Do you want to talk us through what's happening with video SEO? It's, well, well, there's a lot happening and at the same time, it's it's also, um, the standards have been around for a while. So um, for a while you could get video snippets for every site on the planet. Uh, if you install our plugin, we'd add some metadata to your site around every video. We re-index your site. Well, you've probably done, gone through that process of re-indexing. And then it figures out which posts have videos and it adds metadata to those videos so that Google can read that. Um, Google's forever playing with when they show snippets for sites and when they don't. So when you get a video snippet in the search results, you get this video screenshot before your entire search result, which is highly enticing. It's basically like an entire ad. Um, Not too many sites get those anymore. At the same time, what you do see is a lot more people switching to video search in Google. So in the the top uh, bar, you see them click on videos because they're looking for videos on specific topics. Um, That's working really well. Uh, and that, well, that part of the plugin is, is, I think, very valuable. At the same time, one of the most valuable features of the plugin, in my uh, opinion, is the fact that it actually gives metadata to Facebook and Twitter as well so that they show up there, right? Uh, yeah, I saw this. So I noticed that we could also choose whether or not we play the video in Facebook or whether we, um, whether we can like take it back to the source of the video which is a great angle as well yeah um it it really depends on your type of audience but for some videos you want people to see the video and for some video do you want them to be on your site when they see the video because there's stuff around it that you want them to see yeah so potentially you could be maximizing the shareability of the video that you're putting on yeah um just through the viral yeah, it, 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 and it allows for, for more interaction there. To be honest, it, it really depends on what you want to reach. So yeah. we do a lot of videos at Yoast, and when we do them, we um, we tend to upload them to Facebook specifically because that works even better, um, and we mostly want people to see the video. Yep. Um, that doesn't necessarily always mean that that's what you want. So yeah. our video is here and allows you to take them back to your site or not, depending on what you prefer. It's a really powerful tool, and I can see both sides, whether you want it to be shared and, sh- and shared or whether you some- you're actually producing something you want people to go back to your website. In our case, like our podcast, we want people to go back to um, the website and actually download the podcast and, uh, yeah. and download and actually take advantage of the extra links and things that we're putting around that. So brilliant plugin though and um and well worth checking out for all those who are listening if you haven't already um 
So the next, following on from that, the question I wanted to ask was about some of the other tools in your product suite and how they could be actually um, helping our audience because we talk about always being, you know, wanting to use the free tools, but gosh, for a couple of bucks, you can really power punch your website, particularly in e-commerce and stuff. Yeah, so we have a couple of uh, things there that I think are very, very cool. Um, I personally think that local SEO is still undervalued. So for everyone who does a local type site, our local SEO plugin is probably one of the best things you can apply. It would ha- it helps you put up metadata so Google better understands your connection to Google to your local business page. Um, it helps you put up opening hours and stuff like that. It helps you put up a map so people can find you. If you have multiple locations, it even has a store locator built in so you can, uh, it can work in uh, where's my nearest shop, that sort of thing. So I think that's a really cool uh, plugin. Um, we've got a new SEO plugin, which really only matters if you're a new site, um, which I'm guessing is not most of your audience, but if if you're a new site, you should really check that out. Um, and then you've got our WooCommerce plugin, which is basically an add-on to make sure that WooCommerce and Yoast SEO work together slightly better. Yeah. Um, we're looking at what we're doing with that, to be honest. Um, we're rebuilding Yoast.com right now to be on WooCommerce. Um, so we're learning a lot about WooCommerce in the process, which is one of the, the goals of why we're rebuilding it on WooCommerce. Yeah. Um, because yeah. we're seeing that a large majority of our users does actually use WooCommerce. And, uh, well, not majority, but a large percentage of our users use WooCommerce. And we want to learn that platform better. So we're looking at how are we going to integrate these even more. It, uh, it might end up with that plugin being merged into our premium plugin. Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. To combine the two even more. Because to be honest, if you have our WooCommerce plugin, but you don't have our premium plugin, then I don't think you you have the full power that you need to properly maintain a site yeah and and, Uh, i was going to ask so what is the um with the premium plugin which is the add-on sort of the the add-on to the free version what is the main claim to fame on that one so the 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 biggest feature that uh uh, it has is well there's a couple of things but but what i always think is a, is a good first thing to look at is the redirection functionality in yeah. there. But Yoast SEO has a connection to Google Search Console in which you can see all the errors that Google sees on your site. If you have premium, you can actually redirect those errors away. You can fix all sorts of uh, uh, issues on your site and with that really, really increase your SEO performance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it has mo- more than that, though. We have an internal linking tool that is really cool, which indexes all your posts and then suggests other links based on what you're writing about that you can link to within your site, which really helps you improve your internal linking. Yeah, I've um, been uh, looking at installing this one yeah. on yeah, my, so my we- new site that I'm launching soon, um, along with the, um, the, the local as well, because it's something that I'm passionate about getting right, so I'm trying to... Kind yeah, of no, it's awesome. It, it, I, so we did a release yesterday in which we allow you to uh, mark articles on your site as cornerstone content, which is a, a topic that we talk about a lot. Look, what are the articles on your site that you really want people to, to yeah. focus on? And when you mark something as cornerstone content, our internal linking tool will more often recommend that post to link to so that you can actually link better towards your cornerstone content and you can really improve the internal linking structure of your site as you go along. That's and, super and cool. Uh, we have a lot more coming up in that area because we're really focusing on how can we help you build a better site, not just to help you write better posts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that sounds amazing. Um, actually, while we're on that, I'll move on to the next question because it kind of ties in, but um, we, we've talked before about um, optimizing um, one page for one keyword and that seems to have been the big push it's just like get people to understand you know one page one keyword but I did see in the premium version we do have some options for uh, potentially optimizing for one or like uh, multiple keywords Um, is this something we should be really trying to do or should we just be sticking to those similar words and, and phrases and and just boosting that making that stronger so it depends a bit but uh, very often you'll have two topics that are very closely tied together 
And if you're writing a really long article, it might actually make sense to optimize for more keywords. Yeah. So if if you have a cornerstone content article that talk, touches on two keywords that are close that are closely together topic wise but are separate, yeah. you could optimize that article for both keywords, and they could probably still rank for both. Yeah. So you can go up to five within uh, SEO Premium. I would not suggest having five separate keywords altogether, but you can do five synonyms. And make sure that you optimize for the synonyms just as well as for the uh, uh, for the most important phrase. Well, that, that's good too because that avoids you having to do um, sort of you know duplicate content to try and get the other way that people say those things. Like I I talk to clients and I've got um, and Google's pretty good at this already. So like I've got clients who are who who pitch themselves to non profits, but they're also known as not for profit and not profits yeah. and and. So that yes. sort of thing is what what you could really do yeah. with like multiple keywords. You could make sure that you catch all those without making it too annoying. And in English, Google will always, almost always know that it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, we're Dutch. Um, in Dutch, that's not always the case. And there's a lot of languages where Google is not just not that good yet. Yeah. So uh, that's that's where you can really um, improve and, and get better. Awesome. Well, I will add that down because I think that's good advice. So my fourth question, we're running through this, which is great. Um, my clients and many of my colleagues get overwhelmed by the idea of optimizing all the things. And I kind of, when I'm, so I do a little bit of DIY coaching and I also, um, and I have a few of my star students who have followed everything that I've ever said and have these amazingly well um, optimized websites. and. Um, but then I've got other customers who come to me with a, a website that's already got, you know, 300 pages and they want to know where they start and they, they do want to do IY or they want me to offer them, a, you know, a service where it's capped, you know, where do we, so what, what do we do? Do we try and hit everything or do we pick our top content and really, you know, as you call it a cornerstone content, do we hit that and try and do our best for that content, see how it goes tweak that, get that swimming along nicely, and then maybe go back and rework some of the other stuff. So what I would do is is rework like two, three, four cornerstone articles, like the, the ones that you think are the most important keywords and the things that you really, really care about the most. Optimize those, make them really, really good, um, and then link and to go through the other posts, not necessarily always completely uh, re rewriting them, but make sure that they all link back to your cornerstone articles. Oh, Our intern right will actually make that very easy for you. But that that is, you, you really need to figure out like, okay, which should be linked to what, and in, internally link. Make sure that Google understands which are the most important pages on so your site. So by linking your less than important content back to those main articles, you're telling Google and people who search Google which are the most relevant and enticing pieces of content on your website. I didn't yeah. know that. I love that advice though. Um, I have a few people I'm gonna to ring tomorrow and <laughs> implement that <laughs> immediately. So my final question, and this is this this could go either way, so I, I'm just getting a an average picture about this as I talk to my favorite SEO people. Um, when it comes to offering SEO as a service, um, we all kind of agree you need to be transparent about what that looks like and what that is, like that's a no-brainer. But what do you think is the bare minimum that WordPress web devs should be doing? Um, I, I asked this in the context that I did have a chat with my friend and colleague, um, Australian SEO copywriter Kate Toon on my last episode. And we talked about this in depth. That was our whole subject is what people should be doing. But um, sometimes it's not just enough to turn on a plugin. I think um, I'd love your opinion on this. Now, turning on a plugin is is necess is is the is the bare necessities. Yeah. Um, I always kiddingly tell people that um, uh, SEO stands for seriously effortful optimization, because good SEO takes a lot of time. Um, seriously effortful optimization. <laughs> I like that. I'm writing that down as our top tip. Um, Thank you. But no. So what I think a web dev should do. Uh, depending on how much, how close he is to the client, um, a web dev should at the bare minimum deliver a website that is fast and user friendly. 
um, and and has a site structure that is somewhat meaningful. And with that, I mean, you probably if you if you start a topic as a website about a new topic or for a new company, you, you should start with some keyword research. Like, okay, what what are the things that we want to rank for at some point? And then you create a site structure of okay, how are we going to put this into a site? And if no one has thought about that before the website has been designed, then you're going about the design process the wrong way around. Yeah. So that's what web dev agencies should start with. Like, okay, so what's your site structure going to look like? Uh, and then that should be clearly visible and usable, and people should be able to get to the important pages fairly quickly. So, and then a site should be quick. Uh, it should be uh, it should be working along the latest standards. Um, and uh, um, from there on, it really depends on how much of a service the developer wants to give. If he's not an SEO, I, I would prefer people stay out of SEO. Yeah, yeah. it really uh, is a and, career, isn't it, <laughs> these days? Um, yeah, and at the same time, we, we are looking at how could we empower more development agencies to deliver SEO services to their clients without necessarily knowing everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I do really think that is it is a bit of a career. It is something that you need, need to dive into, and that you can't really just say that, oh, hey, this is all it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very important. I mean, if you give your customers a a, a, a site, then um, you want them to be successful with it. And if they are not going to be successful because you didn't do any of the SEO side or you didn't tell them that they should be doing that, yep. then they're not going to be very happy with it and they might not come back. So yeah. there's a, for what, I think it's very important for web development agencies to realize that what their, what the site needs to do. So we're going to be, be um, transparent on what we can or can't do and step back when, and, and just empower your clients with the knowledge of what they need to do next. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. So I'm just going to recap what we've gone through because that is brilliant and we're on time too. So um, so video SEO, the plugin is brilliant and it's giving, um, it's basically giving some metadata, not just to Google, but to also to uh, Facebook and Twitter so that that um, information can then be used to whether we share it throughout our social media or whether we choose to take the user back to or the audience back to our original content source and you know allow them to um, absorb that so I think that's a really awesome awesome tip and um, a reason to install it um, and following up from that we, we talked about some of the other cool tools that you had including your news plugin um, but particularly your local SEO plugin and the WooCommerce, which is uh, a watch this space kind of thing going on at this moment. I'm very curious to find out what you guys come up with there. Um, following on from that, we talked about just making sure that um, if we are doing large content pieces that we are linking back to those content pieces and ensuring that um, we're using the full gamut of synonyms and multiple keywords to make sure that anyone looking for that content is going to find it no matter how they think that they need to search it. Um, and again, just with the, 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 with the volume of content, pick your battles, work really hard on the content that is best quality on your site and then link everything back to that so that Google will find it um, related to your other content and offer it as the best quality um, when you've done your hard work. And back to that seriously effortful optimization <laughs> as a as a service um, that web devs really should be obviously just delivering a website that is fast, user friendly, and has a meaningful site structure. But step back when they get to the limit of their services and give their clients a chance to engage someone who is a proper. Um, search engine optimizer when it comes to content if that is not currently in their skill set or in their outsourcing team's skill set. Yoast, how do you feel? We've got to the end of it. Awesome. Very good. Thank you so much for spending some time with me on the WP Elevation podcast. When Troy said that, um, when he put in the, in our, after he met you at, at WordCamp, the last WordCamp that you guys um, caught up at, 
I can see because yeah. he had a photo. The next thing I saw in Asana, in our team um, communication channel in Asana, was um, Kath and Yoast. And I was like, no, nah, really? Is this, like, are you sure? I was so nerdy. Um, so it's been an honor to meet you. Um, what's on the roadmap for you guys this year beyond um, uh, WooCommerce excitement? Uh, there's a lot of things. Well, we're actually, uh, one of the things that we are working very hard on right now is something that we've been sorely lacking is user accounts on Yoast.com. So we'll actually, right now when you buy something, you'll get an email with the download, et cetera, yeah. but you're, you're lacking a whole lot of things there. So we're basically building our own backend a bit better. Cool. Um, but with that, we're also switching to WooCommerce, which is giving us a whole lot of WooCommerce uh, info. And there's a lot more coming on the cornerstone content, sidewide SEO um, t- aspect of our plugin because we've we've always been very good at helping you optimize the in- individual posts. Yeah. And we think it's now time to take the next step and help you optimize your internal link structure and help you optimize how you uh, how you optimize a site as a whole. I think that's fabulous, and I I'm gonna have to put a shout out to Troy Dean. To, are you listening? Are you listening in terms of our epic posts that you've been writing and you've been getting us all to write? Listen in. Yoast has got something coming for us. Um, I, I, yeah, I love that. And um, it's really good to hear that you guys are still pushing forward and seeing what else can be done. Because hey, we're growing faster than ever. I mean, there's, there's uh, just short of 50 people here right now. It'll probably Amazing. be over months from now so uh, it's we're going very very fast yeah have you uh have you got your kids in seo do they all have i love yoast t-shirts and stuff well no they they, they do have yoast t-shirts uh, i've got four kids so four. uh but but the the eldest is 10 and he's slowly getting into what 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 we're doing and he, he understands it uh but yeah it, it'll take some time it'll take some time i i um i have taught told my son about the um the akismat spam robot and I've got some, you know, some, some swag from the WordCamps, um, but I'll be sure to look out for some. I love for some very t-shirts. Cool yeah, we, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, we, we've got. We'll, we'll get you covered at some. Oh point. my god, that would be amazing! <laughs> All right, <laughs> nerd cred, excellent. <laughs> Yoast, thank you again. Uh, where's the best place that our audience and your audience can get hold of some of these products and services you're talking about? Uh, so Twitter, Yoast, uh, Y-O-A-S-T, Yoast.com, Facebook, Y-O-A-S-T as well. We are basically everywhere where you are. And if we're not, tell us, then we'll make sure we get you there. get over there. No worries. All right, mate. Thank you so much. So everybody, I hope that you have enjoyed that episode of the podcast as much as I did. You can see I'm still smiling and excited. Please remember to visit WPElevation.com to download the the checklist for this episode and leave us some feedback in the comments. Um, If you love what we're doing here at WP Elevation and the podcast, please subscribe and give us some ratings in iTunes so we can tell everybody else about it. Um, And you can do that by just checking out WPElevation.com forward slash iTunes. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to your company on the next episode of the WP Elevation podcast. And until then, go elevate.